Hello everybody, this is Tony Chung with Center for Pan Asian Community Services. First off, I just want to thank you so much for your desire to, to help out for this uh, home retention fair. Um, as you all know, this is the first time that we're actually putting on this kind of event uh, in the Southeast for the Asian community. Um, so we just thank you so much. And, um, this event um, will be providing a lot of interpreters, which uh, is the reason why you're receiving this email uh, with this video, so that we could uh, give you some pointers on what's going to be discussed, some logistics on that day. And if you have any questions, always call me and email me. So, um, just want to start off, uh, Center for Panda Asian um, is partnering up with Alliance for Stabilizing Communities, which is he headed up by Bank of America and uh, a few other lenders, mortgage lenders. And so uh, they actually um, approached us and, and asked if we could uh, put on this kind of event. And so uh, there's this other organization called National Capacity, which is an organization that actually uh, empowers the Asian organization so that they could uh, serve the community a little bit more. Just uh, wanted to let you know about that because uh, they will be there at that event. And so, uh, in terms of the event itself, if we could uh, just talk to you about the process and the flow of the event. If you would uh, come by 8 a.m., um, we will be going over some of the other uh, details at the, um, uh, before we actually start the day. And the, the event's going to start at 9 and it should go till about 2 and maybe with a little bit of an overflow until about 3 o'clock. But uh, most of the uh, interpretation work should be done by 2 o'clock. So if you would just be there by 8 for all those people working those hours. Um, so um, as soon as you come in, um, this is going to be held at, um, well first off let me tell you, it's going to be held at Greater Atlanta Christian School, address 1575 Indian Trail, Lilburn Road, Norcross, Georgia, 30093. I will send you a flyer, and you should be receiving the flyer with uh, this video um, that actually has the address, so you can find it on Google. So, uh, when you come to the, the uh, event, uh, we actually suggest that you come to the side entrance, which is on the Brook Hollow uh, side, instead of the Indian Trail, Lilburn side. And if you come to that gate, you just kind of take a right, take a left, I mean, you'll see some balloons and directional signs, but it's at the Student Life Center um, at the Greater Atlanta Christian School. And when you come in through the front door, to the very left, uh, you just have to let the people know that you're uh, a volunteer, and you just go to the very left, and you'll see a volunteer table, and then you'll see our lovely assistant, Christy Cho, uh, sitting there giving everybody t-shirts and, and everything else. So you would need to come to the volunteer booth and you would need to register and pick up a shirt. We have some nice, beautiful yellow shirts that you could wear for the day. And um, you would just need to register and then you'll be assigned different uh, positions. Uh, in terms of the interpreters, we'll be uh, assigning you to the registration table, uh, the housing counseling uh, area, and the servicer lender area, that is the uh, bank area, and those are going to be held up in the, the top rooms. So, um, you'll be assigned to various places, and then Christy will go over with you, um, you know, what times you're going to go where, and most of the other people, uh, other than registration people, shouldn't have any uh, schedule changes. But the registration people might have some schedule changes where we might pull you out of registration and and ask you to go to housing counseling or service and, and lender side, depending on the, the, the type of uh, um, people, however many people show up. So, in terms of registration, we have actually a packet uh, with intake form, we have, uh, we have a request for people to actually meet with a housing counselor uh, uh, to actually talk about the event um, I'm sorry, talk about their paperwork and talk about their situation uh, with the housing counselor before they meet with the lender. We're actually pushing for that because it's more effective um, to once they actually meet with the housing counselor and um, it'll be more effective when they're actually meeting with the lender as well. So we actually have uh, that form and then 
we actually have a budget, we'll, which we'll go over a little bit later, but we actually have a budget. If they haven't already filled one out, they'll be filling this out. And we actually have an exit survey, which they will need to fill out after they uh, get a chance to meet with a lender, and then uh, on the way out. Um, so this is all in language. We have English, Korean, uh, Mandarin, and also Vietnamese. And so for the registration people, you'll be taking these, you'll be asking which language, and then registration is pretty basic, last name, first name, address, and all that, all that stuff. And you'll be handing out in language whatever uh, forms that they're going to need. And um, as they uh, uh, are registering, they are going to read this other disclosure form, which is basically saying that we're going to record, we're going to take uh, photographs, we're not liable, any kind of disclosures that we might have. We're going to have this taped to the table in the various languages uh, that I just mentioned, and they would need to sign off a, um, uh, their liability and, and, and such. So we're going to do that at the registration table. We have the housing counseling room off to the side, and, and again, Christy will tell you exactly where to go. But the housing counselors are volunteers from various other organizations who will um, meet with the homeowners and go over their paperwork and give them some pointers of uh, what to say when they're meeting with the lender and the servicer. Um, the housing counselors are going to go over pretty much the same similar questions as the lender would. And um, some of you guys are going to be designated to become interpreters for the lenders. Now, I'm going to go over some of the key areas of focus uh, that the um, uh, servicer and the housing counselor are going to uh, need to go over. And uh, I do need to uh, train you on a, a couple of things. First off, I do want to distinguish the difference between loan modification and refinance, because those are uh, two different issues. Um, refinance is when somebody actually gets a new loan in place of the old, pays off the old, and they just keep paying on the new loan. Loan modification is this program, whether if it's government program or just a regular program provided by the lender, it's where you hold on to your current loan and adjust something on your current loan. So that you could adjust your uh, interest rate, you could adjust your payment term, and they could even possibly bring down the mortgage uh, loan balance, uh, and that would actually, in a sense, reduce the loan payments. So the ultimate goal is to reduce the loan payment where it becomes affordable for the homeowner, and that's one of the main reasons why people will be attending uh, on June 4th for loan modification. So. Loan modification, the only criteria is they need to have just enough income where uh, maybe their income has been reduced or something happened with their income, but it's enough that when they reduce it, there's a certain calculation and they could afford that payment. Refinance is just getting a whole new loan, you gotta qualify, you gotta have enough income, you have to pay all these closing costs, you have to have good credit, you have to have an appraisal. None of that is needed for a loan modification. You don't need good credit, you don't need appraisal or any of that. And there are no fees with this loan modification. So, one of the key things they're going to ask you is reason for hardship. What is causing you to not be able to afford it? If people are already behind, what has caused that person to become behind on their mortgage payments? So they're going to ask you, what is the reason for hardship? And then the client's going to say all these things. Um, basically, there needs to be a, a, a particular reason. Income is lost. Uh, husband and wife, and, and wife actually lost a job, or you know the husband actually has their hours reduced, or or medical expenses, or due to other things. Now, if they bought a new car, if they spent just too much money and they just have too much debt, that's not a reason for hardship. <laughs> so there needs to be some kind of shift in income, or there needs to be a, a big, uh, a probable cause of why it's going to hinder them from making payments. The other thing is, um, uh, they're going to calculate, the lender and the housing counselor is going to help, you help the client calculate uh, a particular income. What the bank's going to look at is how much the gross and net income is, monthly income, for that particular person. Because there are two calculations that they're going to do. First is, 
they're going to take the gross income, which you're going to actually uh, try to help the client understand how to calculate. They just need to get to the gross monthly income. Everything is always done monthly unless the lender or somebody else asks otherwise. Most of the time, everything is calculated monthly. Monthly gross income, and then they take 31% of the gross income. And then they say that is the amount that you can afford. So let's say about $3,000. I think 31% is about 993 or something like that. I can't remember the exact number, but that's the key number on how much the uh, lender or the housing counselor is going to think that the homeowner could afford. This is a set calculation. Now, um, the lender will actually see if they could reduce the mortgage payment to the affordable amount. And if they can, great. If they can't, then the lender will try to see if there's other ways to actually help them. So the main key point is 31% of the gross income, and that's how much mortgage the bank's going to think that the homeowner could afford. And the second thing on top of that is, can the lender bring down the mortgage payment to 993? The second thing in terms of income that they're going to calculate is the net income. As we looked at a little bit earlier, we have the budget. Budget is the income, monthly income versus monthly expenses. Basically, you've got the affordable income, which is how much you could use up after taxes. The reason why they take the net income is because they can't, you can't use up all the income from the gross income uh, because you have to pay taxes and all that. So they take the net income and then they compare it with the total expenses. The bank's going to ask how much you pay on gas, how much you pay on electricity, how much you pay on phone, all these things. And those are things, minor things that you're already going to know. And they're going to total it up to see the difference and they're going to compare this to the bank statements which is the reason why we actually have the clients bring the bank statements. And I'll go over uh, what documents are going to be uh, asked in a little bit. But So the bank's going to see how negative is this person monthly when you compare the income versus expenses. And if the expenses uh, uh, just over exceed too much, then the bank's going to say, even if this other calculation works out, the 31 person calculation, uh, because the other expenses are too much, the bank's going to say the home is not affordable. And so we're trying to get them to understand that. And everything is, has to be proven through the documentation. And so um, that's something easy that you could explain uh, when people ask. Um, so that's the calculation that they're going to get into. And the paperwork that we're going to give or the client's going to need to uh, give and provide to the lender and the housing counselor. 2009-2010 taxes, that is to see the flow of income in the past few years for a couple of reasons. First off, if people are self-employed, uh, is there enough income uh, um, that they've proven uh, that they've had in the past few years? And then also, was there a drop in income in the past couple of years versus now to prove their hardship? And so 2009-2010 taxes are a definite uh, need. And if people haven't filed the 2010, we need to see their extension forms. And so some of the people might be bringing 2008 and 2009 taxes then. Pay stubs, if they are regular paid employees. If not regular paid employees, then they're going to, um, uh, if, if let's say a lot of Asians get paid cash, they're going to need to prove that income somehow, some way. The, the lender's going to ask them how, they're going to, how the homeowner's going to prove it. Generally, you need a letter from the owner of the business or the CPA from the business on a letterhead explaining how much they made, when, what position they, that person holds, and also how long they've been working there. And then the second thing is um, they're going to uh, ask how much the, the client's making, and that amount actually has to be deposited into the bank account. Um, so the other reason why the lender and the housing counselor looks at the bank account is to see the amount of deposit, to see if it matches uh, what they say they're making. 
If they're self-employed, we ask them to bring what's called a profit and loss, either quarter to date or year to date. So quarter to date would be January 1st to the, the end of the first, the, the most recent quarter, which is March 31st. Year to date would be January 1st to end of April. Since May just ended, the homeowner probably doesn't have a lot of those calculations So uh, for, for May. So uh, we asked all the homeowners to bring a profit and loss that they either prepared or if the CPA prepared uh, from January 1st, 2011 to May, I'm sorry, April 2000, end of April 2011 or March 2011. If they have any other sources of income, if they have rental income, they will need um, a rental contract, they will need um, uh, proof of uh, canceled checks from the renter. Uh, generally they ask for about 6 to 12 months of those proof. And then generally the lender will want to see on the tax return if there was rental income. And that's on the first page. And so uh, they're going to look at bank statements like I told you uh, earlier why they're going to look at that. They're going to want to see utility bill that actually has the homeowner's name and the property address to prove that they're still living there. And this is not a rental home because uh, the lenders are coming out to help people where it's their own primary residence and it's their principal residence and it's not their uh, a rental property. And if they have any kind of unemployment or any other sources of income, they have to have some kind of documentation. The bank will not just simply take a word for it. Okay? And then, of course, the budget. All right. So, uh, budget will be one of the first things that the bank's going to ask for. So if you would uh, just, as soon as you sit down with them, tell them to turn to the budget and show them uh, the budget. If they haven't filled it all out, um, ask the homeowner if it's pretty accurate and please uh, fill it all out because the bank's going to want to see that it's pretty accurate. And they will compare it with other documents. Sometimes if the bank uh, numbers are kind of off or it seems kind of weird, the banks are going to ask for uh, utility bills and all these other bills to actually uh, uh, coincide with, with the numbers. Now, um, in terms of uh, hardship, um, I, I went over that a little bit earlier. Uh, I jumped the gun and went over that a little bit earlier, but there needs to be some kind of uh, reduced in hours or laid off or some kind of medical uh, bill that came up or some particular circumstance that is hindering the homeowner from making future payments. And the bank's going to want to know, okay, can you show the bank, the lender, uh, that you have the ability to make payments once they help you and reduce the payments? So that's where the, the calculation and everything comes in. You don't need to get into all of the details uh, um, in terms of the numbers. Um, maybe we'll do that some other time. But um, in terms of what we refer to the lender, we call them the lender, we call them the servicer, we call them the um, um, we call them the mortgage bank, um, but they're basically the the mortgage lenders that hold uh, the mortgages. Uh, that day we will have um, Bank of America, Chase, GMAC, Wells Fargo, Fannie Mae, and Freddie Mac. Um, I think that's most of them. Um, so uh, available to talk to the homeowner. And um, just have to know, um, if people don't have, if they're self-employed and they do not have um, profit and loss, then you're going to have to tell them to please calculate or come back. Um, or the lender, I'm sorry, the lender is going to tell you that. So, so you're just going to have to pretty much translate that. And um, anybody that's not receiving a check, Anybody, uh, you know, a lot of Asians do, uh, um, I don't know, uh, work as a janitor. A lot of Asians actually work at a nail salon. A lot of uh, these people actually get what's called a 1099 income. Even though they work for a, a company, for a store, they're considered self-employed. And so anybody that's self-employed, they need profit and loss. And that's the form that I talked to you about a little bit earlier. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. They're going to ask um, pretty basic questions that you're just going to know. Um, 
and it's going to be pretty easy to um, relate that information. Um, they're not going to ask too many technical uh, information. And you could always ask the lender, I don't really know what that means. Please, can you please describe it to me so that I can better describe it to the homeowner? Um, uh, they're not going to get too technical with you, so don't, don't freeze up. Don't get so nervous. Don't worry about all that. Um, and in terms of um, um, words, um, they're just going to basically talk to you about loan modification. I already went over what that was. Basically changing some form of the loan so that the payment could be reduced. Um, they're going to um, maybe throw up refinance, like I said before, uh, when we compared it with the loan modification and refinance. Refinance is getting a whole new loan, paying fees, and getting rid of the old loans, um, and getting a new loan and just paying on that loan. A lot of people don't qualify for the refinance, so uh, generally you don't have to worry about that. Um, and then uh, adjustable rate mortgages, which is basically um, people that have loans that the interest rate goes up and down depending on the market. It's not fixed, like a 30-year fix or a 15-year or a 40-year fix, where the payment actually stays consistent uh, throughout the whole term. This adjustable rate mortgage goes up and down depending on what kind of loan program it is. Um, that's basically it for the event. It's going to be fairly simple, like I said. You will be um, um, sitting there talking to the homeowner, talking to the lender, or the housing counselor, and you just be translating back and forth pretty easy stuff. Any questions, any, um, um, yeah, anything, um, call me or email me, and uh, we'll definitely get back to you in time. All right? Thanks.